Hey Bible lovers, I'm Tim Nichols and I'm here to bring you your Nichols Worth and today we're going to talk about a strange rendering of a verse in the NIV 2011. Now in fairness, this text is already strange in and of itself. It's the one in Numbers chapter 5 where if the husband suspects his wife has been unfaithful, that he takes her to the priest and he makes this bitter water by adding dirt and then the woman is to drink it. Now if the woman agrees to drink it, and if she proclaims her innocence, then what happens is when she drinks the water, if she is lying, it will cause, it says, her thigh to rot in some translations, her womb to drop in some translations, or her organs to shrink in other translations. And then it'll cause her belly to swell, and she will be unable to have children in the future. However, in the NIV, which is the only translation I know of that does this, in verse 21, check this out. It says, here the priest is to put the woman under this curse. May the Lord cause you to become a curse and swell. May this water that brings a curse enter into your body so that your abdomen swells and your womb miscarries. It repeats the same thing in verse 21, saying that the womb shall miscarry. And in this Bible, which is the upside down kingdom Bible, I'm going to go ahead and read this article to you because I think it's very interesting. It says, sexual faithfulness is taken very seriously throughout the Bible. You shall not commit adultery came right after you shall not murder. In the Ten Commandments. And adultery for men and women is punishable by death. Numbers 5 speaks to a situation where a woman has become pregnant. This is wild, y'all. The woman has become pregnant. Not just that the husband has been suspicious that she's committed adultery, but she has become pregnant. And then the commentator goes on and says, and her husband doesn't know whether the baby is his or not. The law provides a formal mechanism whereby the truth of the situation can be judged by the Lord so the woman is not at the mercy of her husband's unfounded jealousy. Dust from the floor of the tabernacle is added to the holy water. The woman is required to drink to emphasize the water's holiness. If the woman is innocent, the water will not do her any harm. It will verify her innocence. But if she has been unfaithful, the woman will have a painful miscarriage and be unable to have children in the future. And it goes on to talk about the seriousness of sexual sin, but y'all, this is wild. So the NIV 2011 is the only translation I am aware of that does this. It is the only translation that translates this that a woman will miscarry. Even the NRSV UE, which I would consider one of the most liberal translations in existence today, says that it will make your uterus drop and your womb discharge. And this is the SBL Study Bible, put together by the Society of Biblical Literature, and even the Harper Collins Study Bible, both put together by what I would consider liberal, secular commentators, say nothing in here about God essentially killing a baby. This is ultimately the wildest thing I've ever seen in a Bible commentary. So I went to a couple other places. This is the NIV Zondervan Study Bible by D.A. Carson. This is the NIV 2011. It does say it'll cause a woman to miscarry, but the commentary does not acknowledge it. The only place I can go to even get any semblance of this is in the NET full notes, which the NET reads this way. It says, Then the priest will put the woman under the oath of the curse and will say to her, The Lord will make you an attested curse among your people if the Lord makes your thigh fall away and your abdomen swell. So the translation here seems to indicate nothing about the woman being pregnant, nothing to indicate that there will be a miscarriage. But in the notes, it does say this. The TEV takes the expression, your thigh, as a euphemism for genitals. It will cause your genital organs to shrink. And then in the note for abdomen to swell, it says most commentators take the expression to be euphemisms of a miscarriage or stillbirth, meaning there will be no fruit from an illegitimate union. The idea that abdomen swelling has been interpreted by the NEB to mean fall away. If this interpretation stands, then the idea is that the woman has become pregnant and arouse the suspicion of the husband for some reason. So they're saying that if a certain interpretation stands and it means this particular euphemism, it could mean that. And that is in the notes. The notes are not inspired. But the inspired word literally means for your thigh to rot or for your organs to shrink. There is nothing in the text that indicates the woman was pregnant. There is nothing in the text that indicates that it was caused a stillborn or a miscarriage. Nothing in the text indicates that. You have to go to euphemisms and all kinds of wild stuff. And to me, that is so far my biggest problem with the NIV. And I recently made a video about some translations that I kind of disliked. And the NIV was really high on that list. 
And this is part of the reason. Part of the reason is because of some of the gender things that they've done with the text and then stuff like this that I didn't even know about. But I'm going to go ahead and take you to Numbers chapter 5 in the NIV 1984. And we're going to go ahead and read these couple of verses just so you can see what they say. And it says, Here the priest is to put the woman under this curse of the oath. May the Lord cause your people to curse and denounce you. And he causes your thigh to waste away and your abdomen to swell. And in the textual footnotes, it does say, cause you to have a miscarrying womb and barrenness. But it seems that the note here is indicating a miscarrying womb. In other words, a womb that is incapable of carrying a child. A womb that is incapable of getting pregnant. But even then, this is one of my reasons why I prefer a more literal approach to the Word of God. When you start getting into euphemisms and interpretation, then that leads to things like this. So with that Upside Down Kingdom Bible, that is a strange way to interpret that text. That's a strange article to include in that text. And for me, that's just a problem. There are other issues with the Upside Down Kingdom Bible that I'm going to illustrate in another video where I do a full review of this, probably in a couple of weeks as I dive into it a little more. There's some strange things with science in there. There's a little bit of oddities with sex and, and gender in there, although they do hold a biblical position on male and female and marriage and all that stuff. But to me, that is just a bizarre way to interpret that passage and even a more bizarre way to actually translate it. And folks, I've got a serious problem with that. So there you have it. Keep calm. Jesus on. This is your Nicholas Worth.